Hello, and in this video we look at the darker side of Bulwall's past. Bulwall has and remains the same as any other city suburb. Unspeakable things happen in all places, and despite its undeserved reputation, Bulwall is no different. Although we could think of things in recent years which have hit the news headlines, it wouldn't be fair to discuss these in a video, so we're going to go back 70 years into the past. I apologise in advance to any of the remaining relatives. This video is by no means created to upset you. All information was researched from the Black Calendar archives and newspaper reports from the time. Let me take you back to the night of Friday the 10th of March 1950. 72-year-old widow Mary Heaney and her friend Annie Croft, both Bull residents, were sitting in the Mason's Arms enjoying a few drinks and watching some others play dominoes. Mary popped out to the toilet in the backyard. Annie dashed out after hearing a loud bang bang to check that Mary was okay. Mary said, No, someone's jumped me. I felt somewhat like a gun in my back. Mrs Heaney walked the 700 yards back to her home at 29 Mustard Street where she lived with her granddaughter and her husband Mr and Mrs Colton. When she arrived home she exclaimed that Someone stabbed me. I'm, I'm going to die. A stab wound was found in her back. At the crime scene the police found a Swiss army knife and that the light bulb had been removed. Nineteen days later, Mrs Heaney died in Nottingham General Hospital. It took the police until the 8th of August until 20-year-old Roy Birkin, a miner of Brookside Hocknell, was arrested and charged with the murder of Mary Heaney. Identified by his fingerprints on the light bulb, Birkin denied murder and claimed his fingerprints were on the bulb because it had been removed so he could use the ladies' toilets without being seen. Roy Birkin was convicted of manslaughter and sentenced to five years. There can be nothing more distressing than the murder of a young child. At midnight on a snowy Sunday, the 26th of January 1947, 25-year-old Bull man George William Cooper of 17 Byron Street was found on the steps of Bull Police Station with his dead son cradled in his arms. Cooper, who lived with his mother and cared for his son, argued early with his mother and had taken the boy out around 11pm at night. He later told the police. Peter's gone. I did it with me hands. I had a row with me mum tonight and she tough me out. I walked round for a while looking for somewhere to finish his bath, but I went to Merton Street and put me hands round Peter's throat and put him out of his misery. I did it. I strangled it in Merchant Street. I've had some trouble with me mum and me missus and all I want to do is go where Peter's gone. George William Cooper was found guilty of the murder of his son, but insane. Our final story takes place on February the 12th, 1943, on Grindon Crescent in Bulwall. Mrs. Hazel Elliott, who'd been suffering with mental illness for some time, waited until her husband left for work before taking their youngest child, three-year-old Maureen, upstairs. She ran a bath, put a fully clothed child in the bath, and then drowned her. Mrs. Elliott then climbed into the bath on top of a child and unsuccessfully tried to drown herself. The police were called after the neighbours entered the house. Mrs. Elliot was charged with murder, her reply being, Yes, I did it. The following note was left for her husband. From Hazel and darling Maureen, to the best husband in the world, please do not make trouble of it, as it's all for the best. No one's to blame, as I brought it all on me sen. I'm taking Maureen with me, as she seems as though she can't keep still. 
Look after Clement and don't take it to heart, as you've had enough trouble. From your broken heart to Hazel. Mrs Elliot was classed as insane and unfit to plead, suffering from delusions and hallucinations, her mind so occupied by them she couldn't follow the proceedings. A history of family insanity was also cited. Mrs Elliot was detained at His Majesty's pleasure and sentenced to penal servitude. The last two stories both concern mental illness. And although mental health awareness has improved over the years, it's still a taboo subject for many people. If you're suffering with mental health, please talk to someone straight away. A friend, a colleague, a doctor. You don't have to suffer in silence. The first step to recovery is to talk to someone. Mm -hmm.